You know when you buy a piece of furniture or decor for your apartment with the best of intentions and highest of hopes only to be horribly disappointed? Yes, it sucks. But it happens to the best of us, including to me, but it is disappointing. Lately, I've been shopping for a bunch of new decor and furniture for a very specific reason, which I will reveal soon, probably in next week's video, so stay tuned. <laughs> and the shopping process that I've been in has forced me to reassess a lot of the stuff I currently own. I've been reassessing a lot of things in my life aside from decor, which again, I will talk about in a future video. But basically, there are a few things that I will not be keeping. So in this video, I'm going to tell you which things I kind of regret buying, or at least they didn't meet my expectations as time went on, and share some of my tips on how to avoid decor mistakes. And if you're new here, my name is Steffi, and on this channel, I give small apartment styling tips and cozy living inspiration. So the first piece of furniture that I regret buying is the IKEA wardrobe that we got when we first moved into this apartment. And I had very high hopes for it. It, it looks pretty good for the price, but functionally, it's pretty awful and would not recommend. <laughs> The accordion doors are very cumbersome. They don't open very smoothly. And the wardrobe is so shallow that the clothes kind of stick out from the doors on a regular basis. You have to put a lot of effort to stuff your clothes in without them sneaking out of the little crack. It's not a huge deal, but it's one of those things where on a daily basis, it annoys you and wears you down. <laughs> I also tried to dress it up with um, some cute little knobs from Anthropology, and I think that really helped visually, made it feel a little bit more elevated, I guess. And my tip for you based on this experience is when you're shopping for a wardrobe or really for anything, really do your due diligence on envisioning how that piece will work functionally on a daily basis. I wish I would have had the foresight to really consider depth and how the clothes would hang in the wardrobe and maybe saw it coming that the clothes would kind of poke out a little bit. But again, this is about learning from our mistakes and me passing on my, my wisdom to you. So this Ikea wardrobe, would not recommend. Don't buy it. <laughs> the next item that I regret buying is this mustard pillow from Crate and Barrel. I ordered this pillow off of Crate and Barrel's website and was really excited about it because it's my favorite color. I love my mustard gold colors. <laughs> Unfortunately, for one thing, this pillow is basically a giant lint brush. If you have cats, this is not a good pillow. <laughs> it's covered in cat hair. It really attracts cat hair and human hair, apparently. <laughs> I know the velvet material has a lot to do with the cat hair magnetism problem, <laughs> but honestly, this velvet bedspread hasn't been an issue. There she is. The cat hair culprit herself. <laughs> so I guess it kind of depends on the velvet. This particular velvet has more of a sort of felt texture and there's just something about it where the cat hair just suctions to it. The other thing that was very disappointing about this pillow is I didn't realize that the back was going to be this sort of dingy burlap white cream color. It looks whiter on the camera. Um, in person, it is definitely much more dingy looking, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so the tip I would give you based on my experience with this pillow is consider whether or not you have pets. <laughs> this wasn't something that was super predictable because again, the 
velvet bedspread I have hasn't really been that big of an issue with cat hair. But still, maybe if you have a pet, it might be a good idea to see a pillow in person. Although, I don't know, I'm finding a lot of really cute pillows in my shopping process right now that I am gonna order online because they're not available in store. So it's the, it's the gamble we place. <laughs> The next piece of disappointing decor that I'm going to share with you is this candle from Target. This candle, when you smell it in the jar, it smells really good. The problem is when you light it. This candle, when it's lit, smells like Lysol. I was just talking about this in this video from a few weeks ago about a bunch of candles that I, that I bought. And one of the things I talked about is that citrus scents like this one, this is citrus and white oak. Citrus candles are risky because a lot of the time they can, they can smell like a cleaning agent. And this one fills the room with eau de Lysol. <laughs> It was very disappointing because again, it, it smells so good when you smell it from the jar. So I guess my tip based on this decor mistake is unfortunately, sometimes a candle will deceive you based on how it smells from the source. So just be careful when, when buying any scent, of course, when you're spending money on something like a candle, something that's just a, a nice little luxury, I recommend being very particular about what you spend your money on, especially when it comes to a citrus scent. The next furniture purchase that ended up being a bit disappointing was our balcony table and chairs from Ikea. I'll be honest, this one I didn't have the highest expectations for. When I sat in the chairs in Ikea, I knew they weren't the most comfortable chairs, but I thought they would be more comfortable than they are. <laughs> I don't fully regret buying this set just because it's served its purpose. There aren't a ton of options when it comes to a tiny, tiny balcony like this, but would I buy it again? And would I recommend it to you? Definitely not. Unless you're in a situation like me where you have a tiny, tiny balcony and you maybe want something to sit on until you buy something better. It's a good interim balcony set. So my tip for this one is don't settle. We really didn't look much further for balcony furniture than this table and chairs. We saw it at Ikea and I was like, let's, let's just get this. This'll do just fine. But I wish we would have shopped more. I wish we would have looked out for something better. I mean, even with our tiny balcony, I'm sure we could have found a, a better situation than that. And actually, in my shopping, I already have an idea. I've already spotted something. So stay tuned. <laughs> Sorry for all the stay tuned comments. <laughs> There's just a lot to tune in for coming up. And the final piece of furniture that I regret buying and would 100% not recommend to you is actually from my studio apartment before moving into this apartment. It was these Target dressers that I got when I first moved in and I had the whole time that I was in that studio for, for all five years. These Target dressers were sent to this earth from a demon, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Now, just because I don't have these dressers anymore doesn't mean that I shouldn't warn you away from them because Target still currently sells them. So if I can save you from these horrible, horrible spawns of demonic forces in dresser form, then I will do it. For one thing, they were hell to assemble. Not that I assembled them, my wonderful, wonderful super dad. <laughs> assembled them and he had a hell of a time and I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy. Ugh, my dad. Bless him. And the other thing that really makes me highly not recommend these dressers is they had this sort of like sawdust residue that would come off on my clothes. So my tip for this one is be wary when it comes to, to buying any cheap, cheap furniture. 
you never know when the sawdust fairies are going to come sprinkle their saw dust fairy dust on your clothes and another thing to actually bring up ikea yet again in this video i would actually recommend if you're in the market for a very inexpensive dresser option i would go with the malm dresser from ikea i had that for five years in my la apartment and even though it's very basic it's very plain it's still a very good dresser functionally I loved that dresser. The drawers came out seamlessly. There was a lot of depth to them. I could fit a lot of clothes. That was a good dresser. So again, if you're in the market for a cheap dresser, I would just go with the Malm from Ikea. So those were the pieces of decor and furniture that I regret buying or at least just didn't live up to my expectations as time went on. Let me know in the comments below, what is a piece of decor or furniture that you have bought recently or in the past that has disappointed you? And, and why did it disappoint you? Was it that it just didn't look as good as you thought it would in the space? Was it a practical functional issue? Was it a quality issue? Let me know below. And remember, your apartment is destined to be pretty, despite the inevitable mistakes that we will all make, and you are pretty powerful.